All right, everybody, what's going on? It is BQ here with the Impact Lounge Redemption Preview and Prediction Show. I am joined by Ro the Great, and we're going to go up and down this card and um, give our predictions what we think is going to happen this Sunday live on pay-per-view. So whatever platform you are listening on, please hit the subscribe button. If you're on YouTube right now, if you slam that little bell right next to the subscribe button for all the current subscribers, that will ensure that you get all future uploads in the future. So if that sounds good to you, uh, go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, let's let's get into this row. Let's get into uh, redemption. First of all, this is uh, the first time we're getting a pay-per-view aside from Slammiversary and Bound for Glory in a little while. So you you uh you excited for this one like you would like we've been excited in the past for uh Slammiversary and Bound for Glory? Yeah, man. I mean, I can't believe we're finally here. It's it's crazy. Um I'm and the cool thing about it too is you figure that we're in April and our Slammiversary is that normally July or June? I I can't I forgot. Yeah, I think typically it's June, but it was in July last year and I expect it to be in July this year. So then at least there's not that much of a wait till the next pay-per-view. So I think that's great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because, uh, you know, in the past, the first quarter of the year has always been really, really random because they're not building up to a pay-per-view. So this has been different this year. And uh, obviously they've been building up to it. What have you thought about the build thus far? Um, I, like I stated on the most recent Impact review, I've been very impressed with the whole build-up. To be able to have a build this long, <laughs> you know, for a pay-per-view, this is something that you don't ne normally see. But they've done a good job. You know, kudos to Impact. Yeah, I'm looking at the card here. You know, obviously there's the random X Division match. There's the uh, Lucha Underground match. But besides that, you know, the, the, the build has been pretty good. I mean, I, I really it's been better than... You know, I still think Slammiversary from a couple of years ago was their best build in a while. But, um, you know, the past Bound for Glory build was not that good. And and this this one's been pretty good. And, you know, just like the Bound for Glory build, a, a huge wrench has been thrown in this where El Patron, Alberto El Patron, is not going to be in the main event of this thing. So I would ask you how you think they're uh, doing with that so far. But I guess we've only seen one episode, really. Uh, and we'll, we'll get to the main event when that comes, but let, let's, let's kick it off. Let's get into everything going on. We were talking offline here a little bit about, we don't know if this is the finalized card. I, I have this gut feeling after we watch impact. Uh, what's today? Today's Wednesday, right? That we're speaking. Yes. So when we watch impact tomorrow, I have this gut feeling that the Johnny impact and Congo Kong is going to bleed over into the pay-per-view. Do you think that's a possibility? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I know we're going to get some sort of surprise. I mean, maybe we get to see a debut or a return or something, but I would be shocked to see Johnny Impact not be on this pay-per-view as well as Kongo Kong. Yeah, that, that makes no sense. They've been building Kong up too much over the past couple months, and then Johnny Impact, is, as, as I've said many times, he's going to win the world title at some point. It's going to happen. They've been uh, laying those seeds, so... I can't see them keeping those guys off the pay-per-view. But as far as guys that we know are on the pay-per-view, so first match we're going to talk about here is the, uh, this is a Lucha Ground, Lucha Underground specific match. And it's uh features Aerostar and Drago. We've seen Drago, uh, I think he was in a Super X Cup. Yes, he was. And he's been, uh, he was a Slam Reversary last year. And he's been, he's been featured a little bit on Impact. And he did a, I believe the uh, ballpark live event as well. He might have done both live events. I'm not really sure. The ones in New York. So we're familiar with him. Uh, Aerostar, we're not familiar with as far as the Impact Wrestling product. Um, he's badass though. And he's... So, Ro, I saw this guy at uh, WrestleCon. He cannot be taller than 5'5". Five, five. <laughs> I, I had no clue he was that little. There's no way he's above five six. It's definitely five 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 six. He, he's a he's a he's a pretty tiny dude. Um, are you are you familiar? I don't I don't even know if you watch that much Lucha Underground at all. I, I want to say we've talked about it, and you're not you're not really big on it. 
You know, I've seen bits and pieces of it. Um, I'm not too familiar with it. Um, I, I, I remember Drago, obviously. But if I had to guess, this is, I could see this probably being uh, the opening match to kind of get the crowd started. And we've seen them do this in the past with, you know, you start up the pay-per-view with an exhibition style match. So um, I would be surprised to not see this match be the opening match. It has to be. And um, it's hard to pick a winner here. <laughs> I, I can't even make a prediction on this because it's so random. But it should be. It should really steal the show. Drago is a little older, and you know he can still go. But Aerostar can really freaking go. He can do. If you've you know saw the Impact versus Lucha Underground show, he can freaking do some shit. My concern with this being the opening match, I have two concerns here. Number one, from a wrestling perspective, I, I'm I'm a little concerned that the rest of the matches on here won't live up to it in ring wise. You know what I mean? Um, so take yeah, I, yeah so it takes like Slammiversary last year when we got that the, it opened with LAX versus um Drago and Phantasma and Ishimori and uh Marafuji and um Laredo Kid and Garza Jr like that match was so balls of the wall and even though the pay-per-view was solid I don't know that anything everything else lived up to it in ring wise so uh do you think that's a possible you know could you see that being a possibility where it's like the 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 crowd is just all about this match because they're just it's just crazy and then after that it's just not not at that level. I think with the card that we have, there's a couple of matches that I believe that the audience will really be into. I think the key thing is where they place these matches on the card. If they do something like where they have the Drago Arrow Star match, and then after they have another X Division match, like say all the X Division matches, if they have them go on one another, I think something like that. That's where you'll you know you have the crowd all hype, and then if the rest of the show might not uh live up to it then you get the flat crowd so i think the key thing is where they place some of these matches on the card i think they're fine having this start but then what are you going to have follow the, after this starting match the next x division match should probably be two matches down if if i were booking it obviously right and you make a good point and you know i brought up i brought up slammiversary a couple times and uh you know the last slammiversary he had was a that's when jared was around it was an excellent pay-per-view and i remember the placement of that um, Loki and Sanjay match, which at the end of the year when they did like best of impact and they threw that on there, I was like flabbergasted because that was the, the, that was my least favorite match of the entire year. And <laughs> I mean, the way that match sucked the energy out of the crowd, that long two out of three falls match that never even got in a second gear really. And then you put the knockouts after it, Sienna and Rosemary, and they just, the crowd wasn't there for them. So I agree. We have three matches here that are in the X Division realm, so they should be, you know, kind of spread throughout. And then you've got, you know, the uh, House of Hardcore match, which, you know, that's going to be the, the gimmick match and, and everything. So, and then LAX, of course, and even in the main event, I mean, there's going to be a lot of X Division style wrestling. So even, you know, now that I'm even saying this, I sound, I actually sound kind of foolish. I think they're, <laughs> I think these matches are really going to deliver actually, but, uh, the, the first match is going to be very unique. And um, I can't, yeah, we're not even going to pick a winner for that. Uh, it, it's way too random. It's just going to be, just going to be a good match. So let's get into the uh, random X Division match of the show, which we're always going to get one of these, right? I mean, at a pay-per-view. Yep, you can bet, bet on it. <laughs> yeah, you, you can bet on it. And this one, we're getting Brian Cage versus Trevor Lee. Versus Desmond Xavier versus the returning DJZ versus El Hijo del Fantasma and Ishimori. So how do you think this is going to shake out? Maybe not so much the finish, but what are you expecting from this? A uh, combination between X Division style and domination on Brian Cage's end. <laughs> um, I just got to think with with a match like this, with the participants, especially with the inclusion of Brian Cage, they might have, I want to say, booked themselves in the corner because, I mean, we haven't seen much of Desmond Xavier and we see DJ Z returning. So I think this match would be an opportunity for them to get a lot of shine in. 
But with that said, you got Brian Cage and all the momentum that he's writing. I mean, <laughs> it's hard for me to believe to see these guys really kind of get their stuff in against him because we've seen his dominance thus far in Impact. Right. And before I get to my thoughts on this, I, I want to go back a little bit because um, I did forget to say this. So before I uh, forget again, regarding the opening match, I said there was two things that bothered me. One was the, you know, the uh, in-ring. The second is the match being on the card in general. I, I would have rather see these two tag up against Cult of Lee or something like that. And we have a match on here that's Lucha Underground exclusive. Everyone's excited about it. But if it was the other way around and there was an Impact exclusive match on a, you know, on a on a Lucha show, it would not, it wouldn't get over the same. So, oh, of course, yeah. Of course. I mean, people will lose their freaking minds. So, I, I still have to do my my review about the the uh, the Twitch show that I was at the Impact and Lucha Underground. So there, I'm going to drop a tidbit here. When they announced Phoenix versus Lucha Underground at the show, because everyone heard there was a bunch of Lucha Underground smarks there that were trying to hijack the show. Um, when they announced that match, they started a chant saying, you need Lucha, you need Lucha. Almost like, you know, uh, no one's going to buy the pay-per-view if there's not a Lucha Underground match on there type of shit. So... As much as we're excited about it, there's there's definitely a um, contingent of, of people talking shit about this. So, but, uh, yeah, I agree with you though. You know what? And now that you mentioned it, it would have been a better utilization of the talent that maybe they don't have anything for. Instead of throwing like the Cult of Lee in a random X Division match, you could have had them you know, in a tag team match. I mean, that's the best way to utilize some of these partnerships because you know while you know, you like you stated, if we would have got an Impact exclusive on a, a Lucha event, it probably wouldn't have resonated well. Who's to say that this match is going to go over well with the in the Impact zone? Because you might have some people who don't follow Lucha Underground, so. True, because, I mean, it's kind of like, it reminds me of Bound for Glory when they had the Ishimori and Tyson Dukes match, and it was like a fart in church when it came out. So hopefully that's not the case with this. So we'll see. I mean, we've seen the Impact zone, you know, quiet as all hell during some pretty crazy spots and moments. So you never know, but let's get back to the, uh, sorry to jump around on this one, folks. Let's get back to the uh, six way X division match. And we're going to call it an X division match, even though Brian cage is in it, but he does a lot of X division things. If this, if this match didn't include Brian cage, it would be a wonderful way for a DJ Z to get to return and win. And one thing that impact doesn't do very well is book returns very well. It's like when someone comes back from an injury, it's not a big deal. It's not, you know, they're not, they're not saying, Hey, next week returning from injury is going to be DJ Z. Like DJ Z will just show up one day. Oh, we haven't <laughs> seen, you know, <laughs> they've always been awful with that instead of building up to it at all, or to even give that guy momentum upon return. So you would think if Brian cage wasn't involved, uh, DJ Z would get this win or maybe even Desmond Xavier. We know Phantasma and Ishimori are not going to get the win the way, you know, they've, typically booked people even though Yoshimori is an X division champion the way they've typically booked the guys from the other company and this is the match that's going to feature AAA and Noah and everything you know that's something they're always going to do with that being said what I think this is ultimately going to be is a spot fest which is okay but mixed with Brian Cage's dominance just you know slamming three four guys at once tossing guys around like rag dolls the X division I I'm afraid the X division is going to look weak at Brian Cage's expense. Could you see that playing out as a reality? Yeah, that was one of my fears when I seen his in inclusion because, <clears throat> excuse me, I think had he not been included in the match, I I would have went with uh, Desmond Xavier winning this match just because in, <laughs> it seems like a foreign thing, you know, him winning the whole Super X Cup, they never really capitalized on it. So I thought this match would be, be a great opportunity for him. But yeah, that is one of my fears. But I, I think, though, from what I've seen in Brian Cage's most recent match, I could see him giving the other guys enough offense where it, it looks somewhat believable. But, yeah, that would be the worst thing to do is just to have him. I know the word bury is used a lot in wrestling, but to have him essentially bury the guys, you know, if he stacks three and four guys and doing moves to them and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I see. Have. I see him just bulldozing through these guys. I don't like it. I wish with with the with the build they gave Brian Cage, they were able to give him something better to do. 
And it's unfortunate last unfortunate Lashley didn't at least stay through the pay per view because you know that could have been a, an excellent pay per view match. Who do you got winning in this one? I think I already know the answer, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian, uh, Brian Cage, man, zero <laughs> percent chance this guy loses. Um, I would be very surprised, very surprised. Let's move on. Speaking of X Division, let's get into the X Division title match: Petey Williams versus Matt Sydal. Now, for me personally. Of all the matches, excluding the f- first two that we talked about, this has been my least favorite build, only because I, I kind of I do like the Josh Matthews heel manager thing, but they haven't gone all in on this. They haven't committed to this 100%. And I don't know if you're picking up on this, but the way that this is supposed to come across is that you know Josh Matthews is this spiritual advisor dude, but it's more like. It's more like BS. It's more like he he just thinks I can be whatever I say I want to be. I can I can be a tree if I want to. So I'm going to go on TV and be a tree. So it's supposed to come off like that. Like he has so much of an ego with himself that he just thinks he can do whatever he wants, even though it's complete crap. But I don't think the delivery is correct. And, you know, him and Matt Seidel, they switch Matt Seidel's music, which is good because I hated his music. But they come out. And he's got the, you know, the spirit animal mask and everything. So he's added that. But Josh Matthews lo- looks exactly the same. For the most part, Matt Seidel looks exactly the same. It was a very confusing heel turn. The impact zone didn't even know it was happening. And they just haven't gone all in. And then Josh Matthews gets on the booth and then gets in the booth and then calls the matches. So, you know, that's what, what do you got on this, on this build? I think the match will be excellent, but what do you think about the build on it? Yeah, you, I think in Josh's case, there's not a full commitment. Like we see too many inconsistencies because, you know, he'll like I, I thought in the most recent uh, episode of Impact where he had called out P. Williams, you've seen him all angry and aggressive and it doesn't go with the character that they're portraying being all spiritual and we'll see sometimes when they have the in studio um with him and Sanjay when he's talking then he'll resort back to it but it's, there's too much back and forth too much inconsistencies and then on side L's and um for the most part it seems like he's committed to it I mean we just most recently seen him really look like a heel but yeah this uh, as far as this whole matchup I'm still you know, acknowledging the fact that Petey Williams is still with the company because it just kind of seem, seemed out of nowhere. <laughs> he appears in the Feaster Fired and wins the briefcase. So um, it's just been random. As you mentioned, he's he got this match because he won the Feaster Fired briefcase. Um, when he got a briefcase, Stevie Wonder could see it through a brick wall that it was gonna he was going to open. It was going to say X Division. Uh, we all knew that was going to happen. That's how we got the match. Now, I think the good thing is that there has been a build to it. So much like the Sanjay and uh, low key match at Slam Reversary, there was a build. Um, I don't remember what the X Division match was at Bound for Glory. I want to say it was probably a, a random ass match with no build. But typically we see the title defended at the pay per view with no build. That's just the way it's been for a while. So this is crazy because there actually is an X Division storyline. That's actually really bizarre <laughs> for the way Impact has been so long. So. This match, you know, I would have said would probably have really stole the show before the uh, they announced the Lucha Underground match. And even the six-way X Division match could be could be excellent. I just hope this isn't the boring slow match that the aforementioned Sanjay and Loki match was. I hope that they really deliver, really go at it. I want to see Matt Seidel and Josh Matthews take the next step, whatever that is. Whatever it is in their character, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, so are you going with uh, Matt Seidel retaining? I got Matt. I got my Matt Seidel retaining. I think it makes um, more sense at this point. I have to agree. That's what I'm going with as well. All right. So House of Hardcore match, and most likely this is going to be this is going to be no different than a Monsters Ball or a Demons Dance or no disqualification. It's all the same shit. House of Hardcore match. Eddie Edwards. Moose and Tommy Dreamer versus OVE. So the funny thing is we get this incredible build. And then the inclusion of Moose is maybe a little random, but they they factored him in pretty well. 
they did a good job with that. And then Tommy Dreamer completely ran him out of left field. But he really got a reaction when he came out. And he's a really respected guy. And, and Impact has to have respected guys on TV. You know, it's, it's kind of like I said when Bruce Pritchard came out. I was like, well, now all of a sudden he's magically super uh, respected now that he's working with the WWE. But, you know, at the time... People weren't like, oh, you know, Bruce Pritchard, he's just he's just amazing. Like, you know, they bring out these guys that are just kind of whatever to the wrestling fans in a sense. So Tommy really got a reaction. The Eddie Edwards, OVE, Sammy Callahan, the whole build, phenomenal, excellent. Every every step of the way, perfection, in my opinion. Um, what do you I don't know, what are your thoughts about this one, man? Is this what you were expecting to get? Like were you expecting some kind of multi-man match like this, or did you think we were going to get Eddie versus Sammy? I figured we were going to get a multi-person match, well, six-man tag. I just didn't know who they were going to include on Eddie Edwards and Moose's end. And while I would have preferred them to use someone on the roster, I think that's cool to have Tommy Dreamer. Um, but I'm not familiar with the House of Hardcore match. Is it just your typical hardcore match or as far mean, what's, as, what's different? Yeah. As far as I know, just hardcore ECW rules. It's going to be trash cans, kendo sticks. Oh, you know. okay. I just hope they don't do um, any unnecessary bumps. Like I, you know, there, there's a point in time. I'm sure a lot of us where, you know, we like to see people going to three, going through three and four tables, but I'm at the point now, like I don't like people taking unnecessary bumps so I'm just hoping that, you know, while this can be fun, they don't do anything too stupid, like flaming tables with thumbtacks underneath and all that. Hashtag spots matter. I like to see, <laughs> I really like to see spots matter. I know what you're, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. So, you know, I, I, I kind of see a big, bigger picture here. I actually think Eddie Edwards and Moose after this are going to go for the tag titles for a little while until they find a way to get Moose into the main event picture. But that's just what I'm thinking. I feel like they laid the groundwork with that with Eli Drake a little bit and everything. So we'll see if that's what's, what happens. But I think this match, it's not going to be a wrestling match. It's going to be a fight. But with that being said, it's the only match like this on the card. So I think it's going to really stand out for that reason. And as long as they do some really hard-hitting action and the spots matter, then I, I, I think it's going to be a really excellent match. I fully expect Eddie Edwards, Moose, and Tommy Dreamer to win. But here's the thing you got to throw in there, too. If OVE loses this match, they lost Barbed Wire Massacre, too. So, you know, um, it's almost like they're losing multiple feuds in a row, which I guess that is kind of what happens when you're a heel. I mean, ultimately, you lose the feud. A babyface is supposed to get the comeuppance. But what do you think uh, is going to ultimately happen here is it going to be the good guy standing tall which it's hard to see that not happening with the inclusion of tommy dreamer and you just feel like he's going to stand tall in this whole thing but i could see ove pulling this one out too yeah i'm gonna go with ove pulling this out and it's going to be dreamer taking the pin he might take some i know i just said i hope they don't do any stupid bumps but he might take some dumb dumb well, i don't want to call it dumb but take some crazy bump and that'll lead to the ove winning yeah, uh, as I started talking, I would have said, oh, you know, Eddie Edwards was going to get his comeuppance. You know what, dude? Just to be different, I'm an, I am going to go with uh, Eddie Moose and Tommy Dreamer uh, by a pubic hair. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> it easily could go either way. But <laughs> I just feel like if I were booking it, I'd put OVE, OVE over, but... The reason I'm going with this is I, I just feel like this is old school booking where the, the heel just continues to do its thing until the baby face ultimately gets a comeuppance in that match. Very, real similar to Ty and Rosemary. Ty always got the best of her and then they had the big match and Rosemary pulled it out. So, yeah, man. But at the same time, you would think OV, uh, Eddie would probably get that comeuppance in a one-on-one -on -one match. So, <laughs> this is a hard one to call, but... Um, I'm just going to go with Eddie's team. Knockouts championship match, Ali versus Sue Young. So Sue Young arrives on the scene. They thrust her into the main event picture right away. As they you know, tend to do a lot of the time with debuters. 
They uh, they've they've done the angle too much where someone comes and attacks a champion and they get the, a title shot. This being said, the storyline that they've done for this has been pretty good, and I think Sue Young is the right character to get Allie to that next level and to show that aggression so she can start transitioning a little bit more character wise. And I've said this a hundred times. I think they're trying to recreate between Allie and Sue Young what Allie and Rosemary had on the Indies. So what's been your take about this whole thing so far? There was a point where Allie did challenge her and they did have a quick match and Sue Young got disqualified. You know, we we don't know what Braxton Sutter's inclusion is going to be in this. He's tagging up with Sue Young tomorrow on Impact, so maybe we'll get some clarity. What have you thought about this whole thing? I just thought I wanted to see more of Sue Young. I mean, since she's been on Impact, she's only wrestled twice, once squash and then the disqualification with Allie. Um, as much as I'm looking forward to this, I feel like this is one of those instances where, I mean, once again, it's kind of like you're booked in a corner because, it, you, you know, Sue Young's still relatively new. If she loses right away, I mean, you know, how do you think she's going to be perceived by – the fans and then obviously you're not going to have Allie just drop the belt right away so I, I kind of wish they would have had more time to kind of build on the feud because essentially it's just been you know she attacks Allie and they have some kind of alliance with Braxton Sutter Allie's you know trying to prove to herself that she's not afraid of Sue Young they have that one impromptu match that goes in the disqualification then we get a title match at the pay-per-view Right, this match could have used about two or three weeks more of build, I think. I don't say it's rushed, but I just think I think it could have benefited from another couple weeks. The Sue Young character and the presentation and the music and the way she is committed to it, phenomenal character work. Um, you know, remember early Rosemary, when they were showing that throwback match the other day with Rosemary and Jade, you know, you, you kind of remember the, what the Rosemary character used to be when it was a heel and she was, you know, fully committed to it. And, you know, it's kind of re kind of reminiscent of that at uh, that time. But Sue Young is fully freaking committed. And I had said that I, I remember watching it for the first time on a shine pay-per-view on an eye pay-per-view. And I'm like, wow, this, how impressive this Sue Young is. But I was like, I, I remember thinking in my head, we're never going to see her on TV though. Like I just, I didn't see it hitting the mainstream in any way, but I, I just love everything about her, and I think she's a very good yin and yang. I've used that terminology a lot on these reviews. Allie and Sue Young, they're, they're, they're the good yin and yang for each other. And, you know, you got Allie as that white meat baby face. So you're right. I think they booked themselves into a corner on this one. I am going, I'm not a fan of this at pay-per-views. I am, I'm going to go with some kind of no finish on this one. Yeah, I well, I'll say this. I think disqualification. I think Sue Young wins via disqualification. She brings something out in Ali where Ali attacks her, and they prolong the feud because I think that's what was needed. Because even when you think about when Sue Young debuted and the reception she got, like there might be some of the audience that's not familiar with her. So as you give you know give some time to build the feud and let her get a few more matches underneath her her belt. It gets people to know who the Sue Young character is because I remember reading too. And I, I mean, I know you can't go into people's opinions, but, you know, some people thought she was just a poor woman's version of Rosemary. And her character is totally different from Rosemary. There, I mean, I could see where you, you could see some of the comparisons, but it's a totally different character. So I think extending this feud gives the audience, the fans, that opportunity to get to know the Sue Young character more. Yeah, you know, and you bring up her re reception when she showed up. And to that, I remind people that Sue Young is a 100% heel character. So it, it only sounds that quiet because there's only a, a few hundred people in the impact zone. But, you know, if, if this were a larger company, a very similar wrestler would have still gotten that same silence. It would have been as silent because there would be, you know, more rumble, grumble from the crowd. But. A character like this, when she shows up, that's something you're more in awe of. That's something not something you're jumping down in your seat and oh my god, it's Sue Young, she's here. Like she she's a heel character. The way she moves and the way she 
you know, you know, hits our offense and everything. It's not one of those styles that we should be jumping up and down in our seats. And, and I blame it on the cool heels in today's wrestling that, you know, wrestle for the pop wrestle for the, this is awesome chant. Like I, I want someone like this to show up and no one freaking cheering, and you know heels in today's wrestler in today's uh, wrestling game they don't get booed that that just doesn't happen like heels actually get silence for the most part but there's not a whole lot of whole lot of booing but i i, I think ali's going i mean i i think you're right i think sue young's going to win by disqualification i think ali's going to snap and do something yeah i mean it's the only it's the only way that way cuz either way you do it i mean if they were to go with the upset and have Su Young win. I mean, what does that say about Allie? And then if you have Allie run through her, like it's just it's one of those things. I just think this is a situation where you use some kind of DQ or no finish where it's acceptable, and I don't think it'd be perceived as being lazy because you know a lot of times we see where when they don't really have an idea. And I'm, and I'm not saying impact. We just say saying wrestling as a whole where they use the safe. Uh, no, you know, count out or something like that. But I think in this particular case, it's okay. Yeah, totally agreed. And I think that's what should happen. So world tag team titles on the line. Eli Drake with his partner of choice, Scott Steiner. He is also uh, a feast or fired briefcase briefcase recipient. And he's uh, cashing in versus LAX. So a lot of people have been saying they think Eli Drake's going to do double duty tonight. I mean, uh, this weekend. I don't know about you. I'm not under the impression they're using the money in the bank style cash in this time around. Are are you under that impression? Because I mean, you got, uh, you know, the tag team title match and the X division match. They, they just, they just booked matches. You know, they didn't, they didn't do the cash in format. Well, and normally with the whole cash in, usually faces are the ones that uh, like how pd williams did where they challenge the whoever's the title holder like hey i'm cashing in my briefcase to challenge you whereas the hill the hill waits for the champion to be in a vulnerable state so then they cash in and then normally uh, get the pin so they, it's like they win the championship the cheap way so i think we've seen with the tag as well as the X division where, and I know Eli's a heel where he was in pretty much invoking his title, title uh, match that he has from the briefcase. So yeah, if that answers your question, but I don't know if you could actually cash in a uh, tight tag match. That would actually be kind of odd. So, so this, I, you know, I don't know what to expect out of this match. I expect Eli Drake to take it, take it to the next level. Scott Steiner at the, uh, Lucha versus Impact show looked pretty good, a lot better than he did at Slam Reversary. And then LAX always delivers, but the styles are so different that I'm I'm not sure I know what to expect from this. Do you wish that I mean I I like the idea of Scott Steiner, but do you wish that they found someone from the main roster as his partner? Because it's it's hard to envision Eli Drake and Scott Steiner winning. Um, I could, you know, if they do win, I could see that getting a, a really negative reaction online. Not because, not because of Eli Drake, but because of Scott Steiner. People, oh, you put that title on Scott Steiner. It, it just seems like this should have been. I, I would have enjoyed this more if it wasn't a title match. I, I mean, not enjoy, but I would have expected a different outcome. Um, this is a title match, so it's it's just hard to believe LAX doesn't walk away. I mean, what do you think about the whole thing? Um, I'm actually going the other way. I think Eli Drake and Scott Steiner are going to become the new Impact World Tag Champs. With that said, I think the biggest worry would be how limited is Scott Steiner because there's no point in doing the title change if he's not going to be able to compete for a couple matches and you're really going to have essentially have Eli going two on one. There's always the alternative where you could, you know, have them get the win and then probably have him put, um, and we've seen this in wrestling before where one tag champ, you know, gets injured or whatever the case may be. And then someone else holds the belt. But I mean, I guess then it's like, if you got to go that route, why even make the title change? But 
I um I have no problem with it only because I think with LAX they're kind of getting stale and I hate to say that because they're one of the hottest if not the hottest acts in Impact Wrestling but unfortunately they don't really have any, anyone to work with at this point. They've run through the whole tag team scene and maybe if you do a title change it gives them not an, opportun- an opportunity to chase after the belts but with these next set of tapings bring in some new tag teams create some new tag teams but uh, back to what you were saying, once again, yeah, I, I think it would have been nice if they could have taken a Braxton Sutter or um, I can't think of any hills at the top of my head at the moment and have them be Eli's partner, give them that rub since Eli's an established guy. Braxton Sutter would actually be an excellent uh, partner for Eli Drake. But um, yeah, I agree with everything you're saying. And I, I see what you're saying with that, with uh, LAX being kind of stale. I think that's going to change once we start seeing Diamante out there. And we just get a new wrinkle in the whole thing. But you're right. They've been just running through people. And that's what really hurt Decay a couple of years ago is that they ran through everyone. Also, they didn't really have anyone to work with. There wasn't really a compelling tag team you could put up against them aside from the Hardys. But, you know, the Hardys were, were bearing people left and right. So it's I kind of see that with LAX. It happened with LAX the first time as the heels. They just ran through every single tag team in one set of tapings. And then it was like, well, where the hell do they go from here? And they weren't able to give them that, you know, matchup with Reno Scum, which was, I think, what they were, which is, well, I know what they were going towards. They weren't able to do that. So OBE came in and it's been a weird tag team division and they're starting to put some makeshift teams to get together. And I can dig that. But I think LAX still pulls this one out. I'm, yeah, I'm going with them. You're going with uh, Drake and Steiner. Yeah, somebody got to win one of these cash-ins, man. <laughs> yeah, true, huh? I mean, Eli Drake could grab a kid from the crowd, you know. Yeah, I know. Well, no, that was somebody. That was the referee's son. That wasn't just no kid from the crowd. Uh, <laughs> maybe he should tag up with the referee. How about that? Just grab Ref Riley and uh, win some title, win some gold. So main event of this whole thing is going to be now, this was initially Austin Aries versus Alberto El Patron. And I was there for the uh, press conference. I was literally sitting on the edge of my seat for it. Loved it. And much like you had said, I was starting to really buy into the build. You know, at first, uh, like, okay, you're forcing this on us. And then they started doing some pretty good things with it. So Austin Aries will now defend the ugly ass title against uh, Phoenix and Pentagon. This was something I expected would happen when they got rid of El Patron. I had said, go on record to say, I think they're going to add Phoenix and Pentagon to it. That's probably the smartest thing they can do. Now, a lot of people have been upset over this because, well, why can't they put Eli Drake in it? Like there is a bunch of taped content already done. So you can't just bring someone else from another match. You know, and some people say, oh, well, that's why they shouldn't tape so much. It don't matter if they fucking taped until last week and then t- t- tomorrow's show was live. Like, they still would have been faced with the same dilemma for the most part. So, um, I-, I think this is going to be fun, personally. You know, these are, these are, if you haven't seen Pentagon and Phoenix, if, you, if you've not seen these guys work, you've never seen anything like it before. So what are you thinking about this one here? Because we this is the main event, and it's a random match. Um, and I hate to just you know you say the same stuff that I say on the Impact review. I really think to add something to this, so there's some unpredictability. I would really, and I know you were saying that you think they're riding off the belt, but I'd really try to do something where the Grand Championship's involved too. Because outside of that, I mean. Who I mean is I think the match is going to be excellent, but I'm walking into it knowing that Austin Aries is walking out champion. Whereas I thought I think if they use something where it was kind of like a two out of three falls, where one falls for the grand championship, then it's like okay, well, he is he really going to walk out with both? Like maybe a Phoenix or Pentagon, one of these guys are going to win it. They're going to go to you know go to Lucha as grand champion. So. As, as while I'm looking forward to this match, I just kind of wish there was some kind of wrinkle that would give me the idea that Phoenix and Pentagon have a shot at uh, pulling off the upset. I don't see in what world they could do it. I guess I know. You know what? I could see them. I could see one of them winning, 
but he would have to drop it at the set of tapings. Like you can't have two television shows that are both (laughs) pre-taped and have title changes and, and, you know, Phoenix. I mean, these guys are not going to bring the impact title onto Lucha Underground. So if anything, I don't think Pentagon wins. I'm crossing him out totally. I know that he won at the, um, the Lucha and impact show, which I think was an accident. I don't think he was booked to win, but if you were sitting right there, like I was, and they did that double super kick to Austin Aries, like, I don't think you realize how hard they kicked him in the face. And I think he, he was taken out of the match. I I don't think that was the planned finish at all, but I don't see Pentagon winning this thing twice in a row. There's no way. So if anything, I, I say Austin Aries wins this thing. It only makes sense you know, to go off the air with someone from impact holding the title. But if, uh, if I had to throw a dark dark, dark horse out there, I would say Phoenix, uh, could win it because it would, it would generate some buzz, you know, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. Now with that said, if I had to throw in just, and maybe I'm reaching on this, if they were do a, a title change, I think then we'd see maybe see Eli cash in. So, I mean, I and I don't know how receptive that would be to folks. You know, you have Phoenix win and then like say for whatever reason, <laughs> Eli runs out, beats him down and then cashes in and then wins the belt like that. But that that's, that's the only other way, because like you said, too, you know, with them having you know, with it being taped, it's hard to kind of do title changes. So if you were going to do a title change, you're assuming that they're going to work a couple of episodes of Impact and then they'll drop the title immediately. Yeah, because it is. they did say that Pentagon and Phoenix, or at least Pentagon was going to work the set of tapings, or at least a part of it. So I still think Austin Aries wins this thing and then um, ends up in an in a angle with Eli Drake again. I just I don't see what else they could do in the main event picture. I've got I've got no idea. Here's one thing I want to say about this card though. As opposed to the last couple pay per view cards we've seen, this is there's not a lot of certainty in this one. Like it, it's kind of hard in some of these matches to pick a winner. They're not as obvious as a uh, you know. I keep bringing up Slam Anniversary of last year. Just cause I guess I like that show a lot, but ninety percent of the matches you kind of knew who was going to win. But, uh, and I can't even think, dude, we didn't like Bound for Glory, so it's it's hard to even, like, (laughs) think of those matches off the head. But, you know, I I would say the last few pay-per-views, you had a pretty good idea of who was going to win. And this one's different. Like, Brian Cage is the only guy where you're just like, Brian Cage is going to win this match. The rest of it, you're kind of like, I don't don't know who to go with. I don't don't know what they're going to do. And you know what? And there's still the the surprise factor that I'm sure they're gonna add something. You know, whether it's a match, well, I, I'm sure they're gonna add a, ma- a match that they haven't announced yet. But angle, some kind of uh, debut, anything. And I think that's what makes me look forward to the pay per view even more. Because while we're giving our predictions, I mean, I could easily see things going the other way like there's nothing clear-cut outside of maybe the brian cajun you know if you if you talk convince me enough i could see a scenario where he doesn't even win win that so um and but that that's that's what i like you know that's what we like as fans to be able to walk into a pay-per-view and you know be surprised if i if i may say right because you know like i said aerostar and drago who knows who wins that match pd williams and matt seidel it could still go either way Eddie Edwards and his team against OVE that could go either way too, because, you know, is that the proper come up and for Eddie to win him in a multi-man match, you know, and then Ali and Sue young, we have no clue how the hell that, that's going to shake out. Eli Drake and Scott Steiner with against LAX. We don't really know. And then this main event. So I would say the main events probably kind of predictable. I just, I just can't see Aries dropping it. I don't know if we're going to get, the new title debut with this thing, but I need this new title to show up. I think we all do that freaking title. They have is awful. Absolutely terrible. Well, I hope it's something that they debut at the pay-per-view versus like I, I was just saying, thinking don't even announce it just at the pay-per-view. Maybe, you know, whomever wins, who's champions, they're already coming out with the belts. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. I could see Impact absolutely doing that, just showing up with the new titles. 
And even the grand, I mean, if they, you know, I know I keep bringing this up, even if they decide to keep it, I, I think that could go, for, you know, it could be due for a change. No, that, I mean, but like I said, that's if they decide decide to keep it. Then see, and that that's another thing with it. We just had me confused too. Is he has the belt? I don't know if they announce him. Do they still announce Aries as Grand Championship as well, or do they just announce him as Impact World Champion? It's a good question. I have no idea. I don't. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think they announce him as the Grand Champion though. Okay, so then then probably they are probably going to phase it out. Probably merge both belts. I believe so. The Don Callis, someone someone tweeted at him a long time ago about the spoilers and 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 kind of alluded to the fact that they were gonna combine the two belts and, and into a brand new championship. And he he just did a winky face. So I think that's where we're going with it. They need a mid card title. Maybe maybe this set of tapings is when they introduce us to something that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. So I hope so. Um, it would be cool. And, uh, you know, I hope they, they build up to it the right way. Like I know that like NXT came out with the new title and all they did was just say, hey, is do a six man ladder match. Like I'm not into here's our new title. Let's all fight for it. Like I like tournaments. I like things like that. Gauntlet matches, battle Royals. I mean, I, I like, I like, I like something just bigger than just one match. I mean, I guess a battle Royals one match, but you know, they, not the gauntlet style that they do. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. So this pay-per-view has a lot of potential to be the best wrestling pay-per-view they put on in, in a long time. As far as the uh, the action top to bottom, I have some concerns that that Lucha Underground match is going to have a style that they can't replicate throughout the show, but it's going to be good. I think this is going to be excellent. I I... I can't see a scenario where this pay-per-view sucks. Yeah, I, you know, the one thing I've just thought, and because I, I think the product thus far, the year 2018, has been stellar. I mean, this new regime has come in, and um, they just kept it simple. You know, they focus on their strengths and try to hide some of the weaknesses. And I really just feel like this pay-per-view can be a statement, you know, for them. I mean, I think it's going to be good regardless, but man, if they could really hit a home run with this, I think that'll do wonders for them moving forward. I mean, they're already starting to get some some positive news. I mean, the people who don't like Impact, they don't like Impact. It is what it is. I mean, we see, you know, they're always tweeting at, oh, come over here. You know, it that's, that's going to be forever. We just, you know, you just have to learn to accept that. But I really think if they can really hit on this pay-per-view, don't tr don't they don't necessarily have to do too much, but just give us the same solid programming that we've been watching week in and week out on Impact. Give it to us on this pay-per-view. And I really think it's really going to... uh push them in the right direction which they're already headed as it is so i should have said this at the top of the show folks um if you guys have not ordered the pay-per-view yet and you have not used the fight app check the description of this video and you can download it and i said it was 20 before but i looked into it i, I guess they changed it but it's a 15 dollars off coupon so next time you uh order something um you can probably if it's one of the cheaper shows from another company you can get it for free or you can get another person to sign up and that'll help you um, maybe get the next Impact pay-per-view free. But if you're a first-timer with Fight, check the description here. Click that, uh, download, install, and uh, pick up that pay-per-view. So thanks for listening, folks. Leave any thoughts um, you have for us. Let us know what you think is going to happen. I think this is going to be a very unpredictable night of action. And it's Impact's redemption. It's their opportunity to start taking that next step into the future. Thanks for listening, folks, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.